Welcome everyone, now that we are well into 2024, the dust has settled on the beginning of the year launches, I thought I'd do an assessment of the PC building landscape and give you guys some recommendations for how to build a PC. We're gonna start from the basics, we're gonna talk about budgeting and what you should buy and what my recommendations are because that's the question I get all the time. What kind of PC should I build, Paul? We're gonna talk about that today. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Paul's Hardware Store on paulshardware.net, the only official source for Paul's Hardware merchandise. Tantalizing t-shirts, brilliant beer sets, high quality hoodies, and more, all featuring the classic thumbscrew for tasteful and refined viewers, or the 8-bit thumbscrew for tasteful and refined viewers who hate curves. New designs are added sporadically and at random, so head over to paulshardware.net and get some of that sweet, sweet merch right now. Or not right now, after you watch the video. Either way. Let's start from the basics. What are the parts of a PC? I consider there to be seven main parts, and that's if you're including the CPU and CPU cooler together, because they often come as a package, although you can buy them separately. You also have memory, your motherboard, your graphics card, your case, your storage, and your power supply. This is the way I group the parts, starting with the core components up on top, your CPU, your memory, and your motherboard, also the CPU cooler. That's because all these need to be compatible, your CPU needs to match your motherboard socket, your memory type needs to also be supported by the memory and the CPU, and your CPU cooler, of course, if you're buying an aftermarket one, should also be compatible with these other parts. The second group is just the video card by itself, because the video card is often one of the most expensive parts of the build, and also one of the parts that most impact your gaming performance. It's also by itself because generally speaking it's going to be compatible with just about any modern uh, CPU and motherboard that you might purchase whether you're going with AMD or Intel. And then the third group down here is the remaining parts. Your case, your storage, and your power supply because these generally can be purchased separately. These are going to more impact your cooling or potentially how fast your applications load up if you're talking about your storage drive. And especially if you're just starting out and you're concerned about compatibility, just remember ATX. If you get an ATX size motherboard and you get an ATX size case and an ATX compatible power supply, then generally speaking, everything else should fit together. Of course, one of the biggest concerns with building your own PC is how much it's going to cost. And while you can save some money by building it yourself and choosing components that are suited to your needs while also looking for the best bang for the buck in terms of pricing, the budget that you're going to want to set aside or have in mind is probably going to be one of these three ranges. I now consider a budget PC to be in the $600 to $1,000 range. To save some cash on a budget system, you might be checking out used parts, looking at resources like Craigslist, eBay, third-party auction sites. Of course, your mileage may vary in terms of what used parts are available to you, and you should always make sure that you can test the components that you're buying if you are buying used to make sure that they function before you make a purchase. Another good choice for budget builds is going with hardware that's maybe just slightly older than what is current generation, and for that, I would recommend AMD's AM4 platform, which is still very viable and has even had some recent launches on it, such as the AMD Ryzen 5700X3D, which is a really solid gaming CPU for around $250. That said, today I'm going to be recommending an AM5 system, because when I recommend PC builds to people, I generally consider that you might want to upgrade your system somewhere down the line, and AM5 has a better upgrade path than AM4 right now, because AM4 is technically end of life, although AMD has still launched a few more CPUs for it this year. I would generally point people towards the mid-range in terms of getting a very powerful computer that is going to be forward compatible, it's going to have a lot of flexibility in terms of expansion, it's also where you're not going to have to make as many sacrifices in terms of performance in order to still get yourself a very powerful gaming PC. Then beyond that we have the high end, I would consider that to be anything above $1500. Here is where the two core components of your system, the CPU and the graphics card, are going to start to ramp up in price pretty quickly. CPUs will go from $300 to $500 to $700 or $800 for the top end ones. And then graphics cards can quickly go from $600 to $800, $1000. And even above that, if you want to look at the fastest graphics card currently available, which is the RTX 4090, which currently starts at about $1800. Fortunately though, for the mid-range buyers, there are better graphics card options on the market now than there were just a few months ago, thanks to AMD's Radeon RX 7800 XT, which has come down in price just a little bit. And then of course, for Nvidia lovers, we have the RTX 4070 Super, which has a $600 MSRP. Not many deals on this one yet, but it is a much better bang for the buck at 600 bucks than what has been available from Nvidia previously. So for mid-range builders who are spending between $1,000 and $1,500 on their system, 
I'd recommend budgeting about $400 to $550 for your core components, CPU, memory, motherboard, and possibly a CPU cooler, about $480 to $600 for your video card, and that pretty much covers the 7800 XT at about $500 right now, and the RTX 4070 Super, which is going for $600 right now. AMD often has really good deals on the previous generation RX 6800 XT. Even for Nvidia, you can find like RTX 3080s uh, for relatively less money than they've cost previously. But if you want the latest in terms of performance, feature support, as well as efficiency, then going with the latest generation of graphics card is going to be a better bet. The only other thing I'd mention for video cards for the mid-range builders is if you do want to claw your way up about 100 bucks or more, at about 700 bucks, you can start to find the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT, which is a really big boost in performance, is going to well outperform uh, the 4070 Super. And even the 4070 Ti Super, while having more memory at 20 gigs, but that's pretty much the case with just about all PC parts. You might say, well, you'll be okay with that, but for a little bit more money, you could get a bit more performance. The remaining parts can often be found for about $150 to $300. Of course, that's the other beauty about building your own PC is you have lots of selection out there. So you might decide, oh, I can get away with a one terabyte NVMe SSD for now, or maybe you have uh, other SSDs that you can bring over from an old system to so you're okay on storage. Little things like that are great ways to save money on the overall price of your build. But with all that said, here is the actual build that I would recommend to a mid-range builder right now. It's gonna come in at about $1,350 with an RTX 4070, that's 600 bucks. You could shave about $100 off of this right off the bat by going with the RX 7800 XT versus the RTX 4070. But you can see the remaining parts listed here. We're going with a stock cooler to save a few bucks. We're going with a solid mid-range case right now that's on sale, so it's a great bang for the buck. SSD prices have gone up a bit. That's uh, probably one of the more disappointing factors of building a PC now compared to a few months ago at the end of 2023. Let's run down each of the parts. The Ryzen 5 7600 is your CPU. That is a six core, 12 thread processor. AMD also has a 7600X, which is gonna perform a little bit faster than this one, but the 7600X does not include the Wraith Stealth Cooler. So not only are you gonna be spending about $230 for that CPU, you're also gonna to need to add probably another $30 to $40 to get yourself a CPU cooler as well. Especially with the promo code right now, the 7600 600 being about $210 is a really solid choice. And likewise, on the AM5 platform, you have good upgrade options, whether you're talking about their 8-core, 12-core, or 16-core CPUs, or going with something like the 7800X 3D, which has 3D vCache, which is basically one of the fastest CPUs for gaming that you can get right now. And we're expecting Ryzen 9000 CPUs to launch for this platform later this year, so you'll have the potential to upgrade there too. One of the first upgrades I would make to this mid-range build is uh, an aftermarket CPU cooler. Thankfully, Thermalrite's Phantom Spirit is a really good performer. It's available with or without RGB lighting, depending on whether or not RGB lighting is your thing, and it's only about $36. So consider that as an add-on upgrade. And if you do go with an aftermarket cooler right out of the gate, then you might also consider a CPU like the 7600X that doesn't include the stock cooler. For our graphics card, we're gonna go with a $600 RTX 4070 Super because I don't wanna spend too much more for an overbuilt version of this card. The prices can ramp up pretty quickly. Check out my RTX 4080 Super review if you wanna see my benchmarks for this card, or at least for the Founders Edition version of this card. It's a really good performer, and it's really good in terms of efficiency for 600 bucks. And there were a few $600 models available, the Asus Dual. There's also a Zotac model and a Gigabyte model that are all readily available for that price. Of course, if you wanna save a little bit of money and you don't care quite as much about uh, Nvidia's software suite or ray tracing performance, you you can save a little bit more than $100 by going with the Radeon RX 7800 XT. This does have a 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer, which is an upgrade from the 12 gigs on the 4070 Super. And this again is an all around good performer, good bang for the buck for just shy of $500 right now. You can get this Sapphire model, which has a nice two fan cooler as well. Let's finish out the core components uh, for our motherboard. I've chosen the MSI Pro B650-P Wi-Fi motherboard. This is nice because it has Wi-Fi built in, uh, which is cool. It's also a solidly built motherboard with decent uh, power delivery, so if you want to dabble in overclocking, you've got that. It's also got a nice feature set in terms of connectivity, like such as that USB Type-C front panel connector, and generally a nice, clean, all-black look. Now, there are B650 chipset motherboards that you can find for $10, $20, even $30 cheaper than this. Those tend to be micro-ATX, which is a little bit smaller, which is totally fine. Just get a micro-ATX case as well. 
but I've found in terms of overall quality and performance uh, for the B650 motherboards, around the $180 to $190 price is where you're gonna get a good overall quality motherboard it's not gonna sacrifice too much on build quality, overclocking, or other features like additional M.2 slots. Gigabyte also has a B650 Gaming XAX for $190. This one is gonna get you triple M.2 slots versus the two uh, available on that MSI model. So depending on how many M.2 slots you want, uh, both of those are solid choices. Rounding out the core components, we have memory. You're gonna want DDR5 memory for this platform. I'm recommending a 32 gig kit. Uh, that's two 16 gig sticks. This is another one of those sort of base standards that I think uh, we need to upgrade versus uh, previous years. 16 gigs or two by eight gig kit was uh, perfectly adequate for a lot of DDR4 builds. But if you're going for DDR5, I recommend a 32 gigabyte total kit. I recommend 6,000 mega transfers or faster speed. And with those in mind, just go for the lowest uh, latency possible. CL36 is totally solid for this one. So in my opinion, it's worth the added five or $10 over some of the other budget uh, DDR5 kits that are out there. Also, since this is G-Skills Flare X5 line, it's going to have uh, AMD Expo settings for the memory, which will allow you to plug in the settings in your motherboard's UEFI to get the memory running at the proper speed very easily and quickly. Finally, we have the rest of the components, and here is where you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of choices available to you. For a case, you're gonna want an ATX case if you have a full-size ATX motherboard, and you can find so many good case options in the $60 to $90 price range. This one just happens to be on sale right now. It's back order, but it's gonna be back in stock in just a couple days. This is the Fantex Eclipse P400A. Just a really nice overall case, and the cool thing here is that it includes three uh, RGB fans in the front, so you're gonna have lots of airflow right out of the gate. Some budget cases will only ship with a single fan and you need to add some more in order to get proper airflow. But this one was originally 90 bucks down to $70. There's even a $20 mail-in rebate that I didn't include in my overall price. The only thing I might look for on a different case is that USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel connector, the type C connector. This case does not have that. So that's a feature that you might wanna look for if you're gonna swap out to a different case. But this at least gives you a good starting out point for what you might expect to pay. For storage, uh, NVMe SSDs, man, they, they were coming so far down in price and you could find two terabyte models, even fast ones for like 70 or $80 a couple months ago. They have come up in price. This is one of the best deals right now for a two terabyte drive. It is a gen three drive, but it is still gonna be uh, three or four times faster than a SATA SSD. And this one comes from Mushkin, so it's a solid brand. There are some uh, less expensive NVMe SSDs that are from brands that are a little bit more sketchy. And you know, if this is gonna be where you're installing your operating system and have important files, you wanna make sure you get uh, at least a reputable brand that you can trust. Finally, you're gonna need a power supply. I have the Thermaltake Smart BM3, 750 watt here. Look at the graphics card that you're buying or the graphics card that you want to buy and look at the recommended power supply wattage for that graphics card and get to that or maybe 50 or 100 watts more than that. For most GPUs out there right now, a 750 watt unit is just fine. An efficiency rating is good. It's not the end all be all for power supplies, but 80 plus bronze is solid. So for $70, this power supply has a nice combination of features, including partial modularity and look, 12 VH power. Now, this is actually ATX 3.0, so that's using the previous 12 VH power connector, which has on occasion had issues with some graphics cards. But if you make sure those power plugs are plugged in all the way on the power supply and on the graphics card itself, you should be just fine. And that would allow you to potentially take advantage of some deals on some of these ATX 3.0 units that some of the power supply manufacturers are trying to clear out because they're moving over to ATX 3.1, which is 12 V two by six, which is physically the same connector, but it operates a little bit differently with the sense pins. Point being, if you don't trust that at all, just use the adapter and use your standard uh, uh, PCI Express graphics connectors, or, you know, just go with a different power supply. Here's a Thermaltake uh, Tough Power. This one's just a little bit better in terms of efficiency, 80 plus gold rated, still partially modular, and it costs about $10 more. So there you have it guys, my personal assessment of the current state of the PC building market here in early 2024, and my recommendations for a solid $1,250 to $1,350 mid-range build for anyone who is looking to build a system ASAP. I have two closing announcements for this video. First is that in March, I'm going to be starting my new series, which is called Build Fix. I would like to look at your parts lists. So if you have PC parts lists that you're working on, a build that you're aspiring towards, or something that you're gathering components for, I'd like you to leave those down in the video's description down below. 
A PC part picker list is just fine for that too. I'm gonna choose a few of those builds. I'm gonna go over them at the beginning of March in my new Build Fix series and give you guys recommendations for what you have chosen that I think is a good choice, as well as my recommendations for parts you might swap out or get a little bit better bang for the buck, because that's what it's all about, is getting the most performance for your money. Also, fear not, for anyone who's been wondering about Joe's build that we did in December, I have a follow-up on that coming at you real soon, and I'm also going to be doing a new build of the month for February, which is actually going to be a new system I'm building for my sister. So if you guys are not subscribed to my channel already, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button on this video too if you enjoyed it, check out the video's description for links to the parts I have shared with you guys today, and of course, check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy high-quality merchandise to help support my channel and get yourself some high quality merch. Thanks again for watching this video, you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.